Um, so we are now recording this session with Charlene Downey. Thank you so much for being here and joining us um, and just learning a little bit about Leadership Long Beach. We've been here for 30 years doing programs with leaders across the city. We bring together executives from the nonprofit world, the business world, and the government sector. And we just teach them about Long Beach and we teach them about leadership. And right now we're doing these fireside chats to bring the community together to just keep learning um, and to bring hope during this time. It's a, a very uncertain time. And so we're so lucky to have you here joining us, Charlene, with your experience. Um, and with the topic that you selected today, I think it's very timely. And so I'm going to hand this over to our president-elect, who will be the president of Leadership Long Beach in one month, really. This is Drew Schneider. Um, and he's going to moderate this session and just introduce you. And then at the end, we will open it up for any questions. So if anybody here has questions, uh, we are trying to social distance, even though we're yeah. in the office. This is six feet, I um, promise. <laughs> but, Go ahead and put any questions that you have in the chat box throughout the session. And Charlene, we'll just make sure it, uh, whenever you take a break, we will let you know what kind of questions are coming through. Okay, um, perfect. So, yeah, thanks for being here. All right, well, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Captain Charlene Downey to the Leadership Long Beach uh, Fireside Chats. I had the pleasure of working with Captain Downey uh, a couple of years. She was a captain of port here, and uh, we like to say uh, uh, Long Beach, LA, but uh, I think the official term is uh, LA Long Beach. Uh, but she's had a, a storied career um, in the uh, Coast Guard, uh, leading efforts uh, all across the country. Um, and do you have a, an overseas assignment, if I remember correctly, Charlene? I did a tour for seven months in Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. Um, talk, <coughs> talk about interesting leadership challenges, right? Definitely. Uh, um, but she continues, uh, she, uh, upon her retirement, she continued to uh, uh, volunteer with Project Rubicon. Um, and uh, has started her own uh, consulting and coaching business. Um, and she's just one of the most inspirational people that I've had the pleasure of working with in my career. Um, just a, a, a dynamo and a, and a powerhouse of, of positive energy and just gets the most out of the, everyone around her and, and people are, are willing to do, go to extraordinary lengths uh, under her, her leadership. So I thought, what better could we do at Leadership Long Beach than to tap uh, that kind of expertise? So with that, uh, Charlene, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Drew. You got my head so big, I'm not going to be able to get out of my office here. <laughs> um, and congratulations, <laughs> congratulations on becoming the president of uh, Leadership Long Beach. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and good morning to all of you, or afternoon, I should say. It really is an honor for me to be in your presence and um, to have the opportunity to spend some time, a precious hour of your day, um, and I know our time is precious, so I really, really appreciate this opportunity just to be with all of you and to talk leadership. It's a near and dear topic um, to all of us. And um, just, you know, having the opportunity to be here and um, share some time with you and, and hopefully come away with a few nuggets is the goal. But um, you know, just to be part of this fireside chat is really a great opportunity. So, so thank you. Um, Drew, uh, you know, did a great job with the introduction. Um, I, I still bleed blue. Uh, service is my passion. And um, so as much as I can do for the maritime community, the veteran community, the leadership communities, I'm all about it. And um, it really energizes me. And uh, and Carrie said something about these fireside chats being so important to provide hope. And um, that's so powerful. And that's what I hope to do today with all of you. So if you have questions as we go along, I thought I'd just kind of put us and allow us to kind of go through and exercise um, a little bit. And then we'll talk about it. And then hopefully we'll have 10 to 15 minutes at the end to answer any questions that you might have. So first of all, I'd like to kind of acknowledge the environment that we're in today. I know you all have Zoom fatigue. It is real. <laughs> and so I appreciate the fact that you yet again jump on Zoom to, uh, to, to join us in this fireside chat. But these are really, and you've heard it over and over again, unprecedented times with uh, what's gone on with the COVID pandemic and now the civil unrest. 
And it's, these events have really tested us in ways that I don't think we've been tested before. And just to think about what I like to call the six uh, core influencers, they, those, those influencers that really impact every part of your well being. So those six things are spiritual, mental, emotional, environmental, physical, and social. And we usually think about body, mind, spirit, that kind of being the whole, you know, the wellness piece. But what often let's get left out or we don't think about frequently is the environment, the social aspects, and then the spiritual or the um, emotional aspects. And these events today have really impacted those three other things we don't typically think about, social, environmental, and um, the, what was the, the third one I mentioned? Just escaped me. Um, but anyway, those, those things that we don't typically think about are what's really getting tested. And so all of these influencers really um, is an opportunity now for us to think about those things and think about the ways that we can and things that we can do to just sort of have more focus on those things. So you're probably wondering what was the title all this of this presentation about permission to daydream. Sign me up. Hopefully that's what you all did. <laughs> We're giving you an opportunity to just chill out for a second. So if you can please indulge me, if you will. And we're going to take some time to actually daydream. And what inspired me to do this was about a month ago, I had finished working out and I laid down to stretch out and I looked up at the sky and it was just this gorgeous sight. There were just these wispy clouds. The sky was a brilliant blue. There was no pollution, a light breeze. It was just beautiful. And I thought, man, when was the last time I actually just stared up at the sky and took some time to start daydreaming? And I just did that. And I went with finding a really, a really healthy um, experience. And so what I would like for all of you to do is to grab a piece of paper or your phone, something to jot a few notes on. And what, what I'd like you to do is we're gonna take five minutes and we're going to daydream. So if you're at a place where you can just stare up at the sky, do it. Or Drew, you can stare at Carrie. <laughs> um, but just kind of put yourself in. Uh, where we go for our mountain retreat every year. So I'm, I'm looking at that. Okay. <laughs> just sort of put yourself in a place where you, I would like for you to write something down that you've always dreamed of doing or something you've always dreamed of having or something you've always dreamed of seeing. Maybe it's a place you wanna visit. Maybe it's a course you wanna take. Maybe you wanna play an instrument. Maybe you want to fly a plane. Maybe you want to clean out a closet. Because <laughs> you told yourself you were going to do it during this COVID experience and it hasn't happened yet. Maybe you want to run a marathon. I don't know. What it, think about one thing that you've always dreamed of doing. And in that five minutes, in this five minutes, I'm just going to go ahead and start it now for the sake of time. But in the five minutes, think about as many details as you can. 
if it's you want to buy that new Mustang, what color is it? Is it convertible? What kind of rims do you have? If it's that vacation, where is it? Who are you with? What time of year? Just let your mind go. And I'm going to put myself on mute and pop back in here in a couple minutes. And if you've gotten through all that and you still have a little bit of time, start writing some things down that you think you need to make that happen. And we'll take about one more minute. Okay, pencils down. <laughs> How did that feel? When's the last time you had an opportunity to do that? How many people have never done that? That was your first time, huh, Drew? Cool. So, how many of you were less than a minute in before you started telling yourself, well, this will never happen. And instead of dreaming, you were thinking about and writing down all the things why it won't happen. <laughs> well, that's pretty common because that is our default mode. That is our mindset. And so today I wanted to take just a few minutes to talk about how important your mindset is and the fact that we have the opportunity and ability to control it and to change it and to move it from the default of having a fixed mindset, having our mind go exactly to the place that's going to tell us why not to do everything to the place that tells us why not. Why not? Why not step out of that comfort zone? Why not go from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset? And so that part, it takes work and it takes a conscious effort. 
So I want, just wanted to take a few minutes today just to kind of talk about that and maybe give you some insights and tips on why it's important and how we can keep our brains from kind of falling back to that default mode. So first of all, what is the mindset? Basically, the mindset is the lens through which we see the world. So we know every single person in this world looks different, even identical twins. We all have a unique fingerprint. And isn't that amazing to think about that? So similarly, each and every single one of us have a different lens through which we see the world. When I um, gave the example when I was staring up at the sky, I actually took a picture of, of it and I posted it on uh, Facebook. And, um, and this is a case in point of the, the lens through which we see the world. And I stated that it was a picture of the sky and I had several people comment that they actually thought it was the ocean with the, the wind um, kind of, the clouds were actually the uh, white caps on the ocean. And it was just a great case in point of the perspective and the lens that each of us have. So that's the mindset. It's really the lens through which we see the world. And each of us sees it differently and experiences it differently. So the actual definition of the mindset is an established set of attitudes, attitudes held by someone. I once heard a quote that was really um, impactful to me. And it said, and the quote is, attitude is the paintbrush of the mind and you get to paint the picture. It was just powerful to me that, you know, Gabe, that was the first time that said, you know what, and I've always heard you can change your attitude and, and things like that, but it's not easy. But to say that I have the paintbrush and I have the, the ability to paint that picture really resonated. And so what we wanna do is let's talk about this set of attitudes. So not surprisingly, your mindset plays a really huge role in your success, both at work and at home. So what is most, what most people struggle with in going from a fixed mindset to a, mind, to a growth mindset are really two key areas. So the first area is that lens that I just talked about, the lens through which we see the world. How are you thinking? When you went through the exercise, did you think big or did you think small? Was, it, was your vision clear or was it clouded? Did you say to yourself or think, I don't have that talent, I'm not that special, the lens is too cloudy, I can't even see that far, I've got too much going on, I'm more worried about what I have to do in the next hour after this. So really think about what lens were you looking through? The second area that a lot of people struggle in going from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is the language that they use with themselves. We are our own worst enemy when it comes to having a growth mindset. So I had mentioned how many of you already told yourself, oh, this will never happen. I don't have enough money. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough time. I don't have the energy. All the excuses that you can come up with of why something won't happen. And it's natural for us to have that, that language. But really stop and think about how much self-talk do you do and how much of it is negative? And I would guess that a lot of it is. Every time you have a conversation, every time you have an email, every time you do a presentation, what immediately, oh, I should have said this, I should have done that, I forgot this. <laughs> it's just that natural habitat or habit 
excuse me, to fall back on, on that sort of language with yourself. So that's what keeps us those two things, the lens at which we see the world and the language that we use with ourselves from going from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. But did you know that you have the power, you have the power to change that. And it takes, it takes a conscious effort to do that. And that's why I encourage you to take the five minutes that we just did to think about what lens am I looking at and, and really realize that every single person is looking through a different lens. And so having that thought and those, that perspective can really put you in a place of higher consciousness, of higher, um, of less judgment. And when you have less judgment around people, around tasks, around your dreams, you're going to find that your attitudes will be so much better, so much more positive, and you'll be more open to stepping out of that comfort zone. All those defaults that we go to that keep us safe and that language that we use with ourselves, that's all our default mode of our brain telling us, I'm going to keep you safe because when you step out of your comfort zone, you're going to be facing fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and I don't want you to experience that. But when we do, and you all know as being leaders in your organization and communities, that when we do step out of that comfort zone, or when someone gives us a nudge and pushes us out of that comfort zone, and we accomplish something that's good, we feel great. We feel accomplished and you just want to harness that feeling all over again and save it for later. So we all know this and, and as leaders, you all know that, you know, it's not easy to step out. It's not easy to be a leader. It's not easy to constantly have that growth mindset. But with a little bit of practice and a little bit of conscious effort, that's what makes you great leaders. That's what allows you to tap into that intuition that has allowed you to be so successful. And that will allow you to continue to lead yourself through these uncertain times and lead your people and your organization to have those, to encourage those dreams, to encourage thinking about those things. Because once we do, and once we write them down, then our brain is engaged. We are consciously thinking about those things. So I encourage you, what you wrote down, keep that piece of paper and ask yourself, what is one thing that I can do this week that gets me one step closer to my dream? And it doesn't have to be anything huge. It could just be, let me, let me just look on a map to see what the Great Wall of China looks like again or where it is exactly. That's a place that I'd love to go, but it's probably not a good idea to go there right now. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to get there one day. So what's one step you can do this week that gets you closer? And keep that going with the next week, and then you'll know then you'll see, then you'll get your mind on, hey, I can do this. This is possible. This can happen. Dream big, dream big. So I wanna leave you with two things and then we'll just kind of have a discussion. If anyone wants to share their dreams, you don't have to, of course, but um, I'm open to any questions that you might have about anything really and just to have a, have a chat um, and see what might be on your minds. So just remember, first of all, that we're each a product of our own belief system. 
you are what you believe and your beliefs can change. So now more than ever, it's important to have that open mind and to have that growth mindset to really think about what are my beliefs and how can I change and how should I change? How can I grow? How can I be greater today than I was yesterday? And remember that no two people experience things the same way. And this is why diversity inclusion um, in, in your organization is so important because everybody sees things differently and everybody brings talent to the table. So that's it. Believe in your dreams, believe in yourself, be consciously aware of the language that you use with yourself. When you wake up, say I'm great, because you are. That's it. So I'm have to get my mind out of the, uh, I, I have my visual of going up the John Muir Trail that's uh, Okay. Uh, but I uh, want to open up the conversation to, to the group here. And uh, thank you so much, Arlene. This was just, uh, uh, ironically, yeah, Carrie and, and Jill and Kathy and I were meeting and talking about future for leadership Long Beach. And so I'm doing some planning. Um, but this kind of uh, setting ourselves in the, in the right mental path is, is huge. Uh, thank you so much for giving us the uh, freedom to dream. Oh, well, you're welcome. And, and yeah, the John Muir, that's a, that's awesome. I think that would be a fantastic journey. And um, I had an opportunity when I retired, I did the Camino de Santiago. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but what an incredible journey and experience. Um, highly recommend it to anyone out there. Um, if, if you have the chance to do it, really, really incredible. But don't stop don't stop dreaming about the JMT. We'll do. Um, one want to open the floor to anyone else who has questions. I mean, uh, Captain Danny's had a pretty amazing career and uh, just, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Charlene, thank you um, for giving us this hour. It was really timely and inspirational. Uh, this is Woody size for the rest of you on the phone. But um, a couple of nuggets that, just really well timed for me, we're um, remembering that we all view things through a lens. And for ourselves, we have to check or challenge our own lens as well as from time to time, as well as to recognize that um, not everyone's gonna see things uh, through my lens. So everyone's coming at it from a different, uh, a different point of view and a different lens. So that's really a good, two good nuggets for me. And then I also like um, the idea just to do one thing in the next week that gets you closer to what you day dreamt about. And um, break it down into little parts and put a post-it on your monitor and make sure you get it done that week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and thanks so much, Woody, for, the, for those comments. Um, I heard something the other day that um, was really neat about um, kind of, you know, how to test that with yourself. Leading yourself, I think, is so much more difficult than leading others. And we have a tendency, again, to not like what we see when we think about ourselves. And so when we do that, we're just going to say, oh, let me go do what I enjoy and what I like to see. And it's not myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that part of the self work is tough and we typically don't take the time to do it but it doesn't take long and so that part about um the lens through which we see things and how do we challenge that um i heard something the other day that said do you think like a soldier or do you think like a scout and the meaning behind that is do you think, are you on the defensive, a soldier being on the defense? Or do you think like a scout, do you come from a perspective of exploration, of curiosity? And I would argue thinking like a scout is much more beneficial in terms of 
allowing yourself to open your mind and having a little intellectual humility. By that I mean, we don't know everything there is to know about everything in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what we think is right in our mind and in our perspective and in our experience and everything that made us up to what we are today may not be right. And so that was something that was just kind of turned the light bulb on for me to just, again, if you kind of calibrate yourself in the morning or at noon or, you know, if you're a night owl and that's when your creative juices come on, whenever that is for you, you know, consciously put yourself in a place of, am I going to be a scout today? That's what I tell myself. I'm going to be a scout and I'm going to be curious and I'm going to ask and I'm not going to try, I'm going to try not to jump to um, conclusions or judgment. I'm just going to listen and be curious. So yeah, thanks Woody. Um, yeah. Really, really great points. Now more than ever. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Kenny brought up a question. Any helpful exercises to get rid of the negative default voices in your head? That's a good one, Kenny. Yeah, that is a good one. Um, I don't know if many of you have tried um, mindfulness, meditation, um, affirmations, those, any type of exercise that allows you to be in a place where you're consciously aware of what you're saying to yourself. Um, and the way to do that, that I found, and there are a ton of different things, and I'd be, I'm sure there's, there's people in the group here that um, have a lot to offer, so I'd love to hear from all of you because I'm just as excited to be here to learn from you too, so I would love to hear what others have to say. But um, me, I think of it as override the default, override the default. How do I do that? I'm going to place myself, um, you know, do a simple thing of what three things am I grateful for? When I wake up immediately, what three things am I grateful for? Halfway through the day, check it. Maybe one of those is replaced by something that happened in the morning that I said, oh, I'm grateful for this today. I'm grateful for the, the fact that, you know, I can ride a bus now or whatever that is and replace. So I've always got my top three going. And by doing them, by the end of the day, what, what are the three things I'm grateful for? And it doesn't take but two seconds. And I don't even write it down. It's just, a, you know, it's, it's mental exercises. But I think you'll find a way that when you do that and you think about gratitude or you think about those things that are important to you, um, you will find that that negativity is not at the forefront. It's still there. And I don't know that it ever goes away completely, but you know, as they say, it's a journey. And the more you learn about yourself and when that negative talk starts happening and you're aware of it, then, then you know that you can just override it. You can, I just start thinking about, you know, what am I grateful for? So that's, that's just an example. It's different for everybody. And, you know, if anybody has any other practices that they do, it'd be great to, to hear them. So I'm being joined here uh, by Jill, our incoming uh, interim executive director, and she has a question for the group. Hi, Jill. Hi. I love everything you've said so far. So how do you take this daydream and make it a collective dream? How do you dream together as a group? Oh, your 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 individual dreams you're talking about? This would be, you no, know, like how does a group have a collective dream? Like what would be 
How would oh. you some of these same things that we're talking about for individual dreams, but how do we share this as a group, a collective dream? Yeah. So that's a great question um, as a team. And I do actually a lot of work with um, uh, teams such as yourselves. Uh, so I have the ability to give these, they're called energy leadership assessments. And it really is a, an assessment that measures your attitude. If you've heard of Myers-Briggs or DISC or Enneagram, any of those type of assessments, they typically measure um, personality. And it's really difficult to change one's personality. Um, you know, if, if you're an introvert, you don't wake up one day and say, oh, I want to be an extrovert today. You know, it's, it's kind of, you have these labels, you're aware of them, and you kind of know, I need to work around this because this is who I am. On the flip side, this, at, this it's called energy leadership assessment. It measures attitude. So the, my point of saying all that is when I do a lot of work with teams where we take a look at what are, what is our, how do we, how do we show up on, on a normal basis and how do we res respond to stress? So every individual takes an assessment, but then we'll take a look at it as a team and as a group. So what you can do on this dream uh, idea is what do you just the exercise that I did with you don't have it in a set format but you what are your dreams for the group and just you know jot them down free flow there should be no bounds no money no you know do it with in the perfect world these are our dreams what does it look like? Who are you with? Where are you? You know, go, go, for, go for it all. But then as you go, you're going to have constraints, of course, but then just break it down just like we did and say, what is one thing we can do to get us there? You know, you can even break it down into a year or six months. And in a month, we need to do this. In two weeks, we need to do this. In a week, we need to do this. And tomorrow, we need to do this. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. I ha actually have a framework that, that has that. But it doesn't, you don't even need to get that complicated. But the more you know about how you kind of show up as a, as a group, the more you're going to know each other and what it takes to get there. So this, this dream exercise, like what I did for you, you can absolutely do it with a group and it doesn't take much, but just throw some things down and, you know, the constraints that you're working in, they'll come along as you break it down into, you know, looking at what the things you need to get there. But the big point about this is don't let anything hold you back initially because you want all the ideas to come to the table on what the ideal looks like. I like this lady. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, too. I think. I think it's a chat. Does anyone else have any questions for Charlene? Or final comments? I want to throw out, uh, Charlene. Uh, what was your greatest leadership challenge during your, uh, your career? Oh, my goodness. Um, Sorry to put you on the spot. Oh, it's a great question. Whew. So I think just kind of, uh, of a quick thought, the biggest challenge, and I can't put it on a specific uh, operation or incident, and there are a lot of those, um, but I think it, had, it, it came down to probably the people aspects. And just in terms of um, 
you know, managing people and making sure that you're making the right decisions for the member, the unit, and then the organization as a whole. And um, when you're making decisions about things that affect people's livelihoods, their income, their health, their family, their um, life, those weigh heavy. And so I would say that those were probably the most difficult because, you know, like any organization, um, people do things, they get in trouble, um, they have missteps. Um, how much rope do you give? Um, you know, how often, when, when is the last straw? Uh, that sort of thing. So it, it, it definitely revolved around um, probably the, the management of people and, um, you know, making sure that you're making the right decision across the board. And that those were, those were tough, heavy decisions. And I would say a close second to that, the hardest thing um, outside of, you know, your employees and the, the people that I was responsible for and worked with was, um, you know, having to make a next, those next of kin, next of kin notifications um, to people and families that we were searching for at sea and um, either having to make the decision of stop, that we're going to stop searching uh, or that we found them and the news isn't good. Uh, so those were really, really difficult conversations and, um, you know, a, a really tough part of the job, but, but at the same time had the most impact uh, because you gain, um, you, you make relationships with uh, families and all of a sudden you're parachuted into people's world who are missing a loved one. And, um, you know, you, you end up getting and, and forming bonds with them. And so there are folks that I still keep in touch with today uh, from having worked uh, search and rescue cases and, um, you know, just uh, creating those bonds and, and having really tough conversations. And so, uh, again, it just kind of revolved, probably revolves around people. Um, An incredible answer it was, uh quite thought-provoking. Um, Lindsay Mays from our team did come back with, uh, she asked, what's your su human superpower? Oh my goodness, my human superpower. <laughs> I'm still looking for it. <laughs> oh gosh. I off a few, but. <laughs> I don't know what my human superpower is. Um, gosh, that's a tough one. I, I, I have to think about that. I, I'd probably say, um, I'd, I'd probably say around the, uh, the leadership and maybe team building and, um, and people. I really have a passion for that and, um, and service. I love working with teams and Drew mentioned Team Rubicon. That's a veterans disaster response organization. Um, it's definitely my jam and my my people <laughs> just being able to help people on their darkest day at least bring a little bit of light into um, some dreary moments whether their house was destroyed by uh, hurricanes or floods or most recently with the COVID response we um, we worked with a lot of the local food food banks to get food out to people and uh, the senior communities. So um, yeah, I think probably services is, is probably my superpower. I have this visual of the, uh, the, the Care Bear with the uh, <laughs> perks coming out uh, when I think of your superpowers, Charlene. Oh, thank you, Drew. <laughs> You're too kind. Um, well, I just want to thank you uh, so much for joining today. This was uh, 
all of us are enjoying this experience so much and are feeling so energized and empowered and uh, thoughtful. And uh, I feel my blood pressure went down by 20 points over mm -hmm. the course of this conversation, which uh, oftentimes when I'm thinking about my dreaming, it has the opposite effect. So mm -hmm. personally, I'm, I'm, uh, thank you so much for uh, this gift. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been a tremendous friend and leader, and thank you for sharing with our group today. Oh, thank you, Drew. And thanks to all of you again for your time and for chiming in. Um, I would love the opportunity. If any of you would, would are interested in coaching or if there's anything I can do for you or your organization, um, Drew and, and um, Carrie have my contact information. I'd love to work with you. And if, you're, if you have an opportunity to get together before your program ends, um, I'd, I'd love to meet all of you as a group if that's possible as well. So. If I can do anything, I'm here. And congratulations again on being part of this great cohort, cohort and, um, and program. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. thank you. Keep safe and well.